The Fed is behind the curve. There have been six jolts to the Fed in the last six weeks. The seasonal adjustments of the CPI took the trend downwards in inflation during 2022 out of the data. The inflation figures for the last several months of 2022 were revised upwards, further taking any sign of declining inflation out. We got a CPI number that was uh, very uh, disappointing in terms of how high the level and the core was, and that was reinforced by the uh, PCE information when it uh, came in. All the indicators for January read strong, suggesting that monetary policy has not yet gotten substantial traction in slowing the fullness of the aggregate uh, economy down. The uh, wage inflation numbers, uh, as they have been revised, no longer show the kind of reductions that we had been uh, expecting, or many had been uh, expecting uh, to see. And you've seen interest rates move uh, to ratchet upwards with the 10-year crossing four and the two-year reaching record uh, levels. Put all that together, and I think a reasonable assessment of where the Fed is would say that they have not been this far behind the curve for a year or so. Uh, once again, the forces, the arguments made by Team Transitory have unfortunately looked more like uh, wishful thinking. And you can see that in the evolution of rhetoric from we will have a soft landing towards it's possible that we will have a soft landing. Of course, it is possible that we will have a soft landing, but maximizing that limited prospect depends upon realistically assessing the situation. Look, uh, they're not in the right place right now with respect to March. Um, I saw an estimate suggesting that markets right now are assigning a 22% probability to a 50 basis point move uh, in March. The Fed right now should have the door wide open to a 50 basis point move in March. No need to be committed to that till we see the next employment figures, till one sees what happens in markets. But if markets are now saying 22 percent, that means the door isn't open to that possibility. And there's a very significant chance that that's going to be the right thing to do. The main reason to move slowly in monetary policy is because you want to preserve the option of moving less far. It's looking less and less likely that the right thing to do is to not raise rates by at least another 50 basis points. And if that is the right thing to do, it's best for credibility and it's best for ultimate stability to make that move more quickly. So I've been very disappointed to see some of the speeches coming out of the Fed that have seemed to leave March off the table as a possible place for 50. And I hope the senior leadership of the Fed will guide to agnosticism on the possibility of a 50 basis point move uh, in March. And we'll do that sometime very soon. Larry, we all uh, cling to the notion that our central bank is independent from the political process in this country. At the same time, we're going to have Jay Powell up for testimony for two days before Congress next week. We also have a nomination to come of a new vice chair. Does politics necessarily get injected? Well, already people are talking about possible candidates for the vice chair position, whether they're a hawk or a dove, with some of the more progressives in Congress saying, let's get a dove in there. I guess I'd say uh, this. I'd say that the chairman has an important opportunity when he testifies to reset uh, expectations 
and to address the growing credibility problems that the Fed has. I think progressives are making a serious mistake even by their own lights. If there's a sense that progressive political conviction is guiding the next nomination, and even more if that's successful in getting a person confirmed, I think there'll be very little impact on the next two or three appointments, next two or three decisions, because the Fed's going to want to show its independence. The incumbents are going to want to look like they have not been pushed around. A new person's not going to have media impact. So you won't affect rates in the short run, but that sign of politicization will uh, cause issues of medium-term expectation, and that will cause the back end of the curve to rise. So ironically, that kind of political pressure is likely to put more inflation premium into interest rates and likely to lead to higher long rates, which means higher mortgage rates for the very people uh, progressives are trying uh, to help. This is really a very misguided and problematic uh, strategy for progressives, even if one had their judgment that what's most important is lower rates and to uh, stimulate uh, the economy. So I hope they'll back off uh, this kind of public campaign. You know, I think there are two things that people should uh, keep in mind uh, as they're thinking about uh, China. One is the importance of predictability and stability. I think that the Chinese underestimate the extent to which uh, previously respected members of the financial community can disappear without that having collateral impacts on uh, confidence and on the flow of uh, capital. And if there's a sense of the politicization of things financial to a growing degree, I think that's something they've got to be very careful of. There's a backdrop that's maybe an undertold story, which is that, which is what's happening demographically. Nick Eberstadt, who is the leading watcher of all things demographic, tells us in the Washington Post that China has half as many births last year as it did in 2016. That is a sea change with extraordinary speed. It, the downwards trend had heavily started before COVID. And in addition to what that means for the labor force, the age structure of the population down the road, when a population's deciding to have half as many children and have that revolution in six years, it says there's some very fundamental concerns about the future in that society.